Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today I'd like to cover a topic that I have a previous video on. The MEFO bills. The MEFO bills are available uh, if you play as Germany in Hearts of Iron 4 and you start off the game with them and you get the choice under your events and decision screen whether to extend them or not. And when you extend them, it costs increasing amounts of political power to extend them. It also costs you 0.2 to start the game. Uh, you're, you're spending 0.2 political power per day just to have the MAFO bills. And the trade-off is you get really good buffs to your construction, including 25% to mil military factory construction speed, and 15% to fuel silo and refinery construction speed. So obviously I've let these bills fall off and I let them fall off um, right, off at the, uh, right off the bat in the game here. So as you can see, July 5th, 1936 is when they fall off. And after that happens, you'll receive a debuff here. So when you start off the game, you see that there'll be a buff, all the buffs that I described. So after you let them fall off, you can see the debuff is consumer goods factories, uh, 20%. So this is very cons uh, significant. Germany starts off with uh, 17 factories for construction here. And as you can see, we're down to five. So it is extremely significant and instead of having the buff to the different types of construction I would rather take this debuff early so that I don't have to suffer the penalties like in the middle of a war or something and therefore I can fix things like my bunkers uh, my railways because I have plenty of factories to for construction uh, I don't see that having the buffs to construction is that great considering the way I play the game is to speed rush. So I'll basically take over Poland in October 1936, then go to France and the Low Countries by like April uh, 1937. So if you do declare war, say in 1936 against Poland, after you finish that war, the MEFO bills will fall off anyways. It's kind of an automatic thing. So if you are role-playing the game, I would say definitely extend the bills because it simulates what happened historically. And you also can reduce the penalties to the MEFO bills if you follow your focus tree here and get Anschluss. And as you can see there in the middle, it says it uses Austrian gold to reduce the, the cost of the MEFO bills. So every time you click the button, uh, extend MEFO bills, uh, you'll get a further penalty to uh, your political power per day. And then also if you if you work down here to fate of Czechoslovakia, which will basically give you decisions to take over Czechoslovakia, you can also further reduce the MEFO bills. But it doesn't go to zero. You're still paying something. And political power is incredibly important in Hearts of Iron 4 to upgrade your government system here. And I would say I'd rather not take a hit to political power. Instead, uh, I would rather have things like free trade, which improves your construction speed, and partial mobilization, like you can take that up to war economy, which further reduces your consumer good factories by like 5% right there. So that's very significant. So I'd rather pour in my resources uh, my political power into things like that instead of these construction speed buffs and to be honest with you by 19 by October of 1936 I'm probably have only been able to build like two military factories so really what's the point if I the military factories the way to get more of them early in the game is just take over other countries I can get something like 11 military factories. It's some like 8 to 11, I, I'm not sure, uh, military factories that are available in Poland. So instead of constructing them myself, I can just capture them from other countries. So this is kind of a summary of how I play the MEFO bills in Hearts of Iron 4. 
Uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you on the next one.